Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will talk about the scope and local variables in Java. Here's our outline. We will see what is a scope and what is a local variable, and then we will see what's the relation between the scope and naming local variables. Let's get started. What is a scope? The scope of a variable is the part of the program where the variable can be referenced or used. So first of all, a variable defined inside a method is called a local variable. And the scope of a local variable starts from its declaration and continues to the end of the block that contains the variable. And as you know, a local variable must be declared and assigned a value before it can be used. And finally, parameters are also local variables. Their scope is the whole method. Now let's see some examples. Over here we have a main method. So first of all, what is the block of the main method? As you know, the block of the main method starts from the starting brace and ends at the ending brace, right? So all this area over here is the block of the main method. So first of all, let's talk about this parameter over here. This is a variable and it is called args, okay? And as we said, parameters are local variables. So this variable is a local variable to the main method. It can be used only inside the main method, okay? So as we said from a little bit, the scope of a parameter is the whole method. So this variable can be used starting from the starting brace until the ending brace. So the scope of this variable starts from this point and ends at this point, okay? Now suppose that we declare another variable, int local1. So what is the scope of this variable? It starts over here where we declare the variable and it ends over here because this variable is declared inside the block of the main method. So its scope starts from its declaration, so over here, and it ends with the end of the block that contains the variable, which is the block of the main method. So it ends over here, okay? So I say again, this variable can be used starting from this point until the end of the method. Now suppose that we have an if statement. I don't care about the condition, and we have some braces. So the if statement has its own block, okay? Now what if we declare a variable inside the if statement? So the scope of this variable starts from its declaration until the end of the block that contains the variable. So it starts over here and ends over here because this is the end of the block that contains the variable local2, okay? So this variable can be used starting from this point until this point over here, okay? So we cannot use it outside the if statement. We cannot use it above it and also we cannot use it below it, okay? Another example, suppose that we have this for loop. And inside it, we are initializing an integer, local3, which is equal to 0. So we are declaring this variable to be used inside the block of the for loop. So this variable can be used starting from this brace until this brace over here. So we can imagine the scope of this variable to be like this, okay? So also, this variable cannot be used outside the for loop, above it, or below it, okay? It can be used only inside the for loop. Now let's see some other examples. So first of all, the args variable can be used from the beginning to the end of the method. And after that, you are declaring this variable in the if statement. So we can use it from this point where we declare the variable until the end of the if statement. And after that, we are declaring the integer local1. So we can use this integer starting from this point until the end of the method. And finally, this variable can be only used inside the for loop, okay? Now let's have a closer look over here. As you can see, the scope of the args variable is the whole method. So we can use the args variable inside the if statement and outside it and inside the for loop, right? But have a look at this variable. We can only use it at this space over here. We cannot use it outside the if statement. Also, let's have a look at local1. This variable can be used inside the for loop because as you can see, the scope of this variable includes the for loop, okay? But as you can see, the local3 can only be used inside the for loop. So imagine this. A smaller block can access a bigger block. In other words, the block of the for loop can access the variable local1. So it's accessing the block of the main method. Also, a bigger block cannot access a smaller block. In other words, as we said, this variable cannot be used outside the if statement. So the block of the main method cannot access the variable that is declared inside the block of the if statement. And also, the block of the main method cannot access the variable local3. So it cannot access the block of the for loop. So a bigger block cannot access a smaller block. But a smaller block can access a bigger block, okay? Now let's talk about naming variables. We can declare local variables with the same name in independent blocks. But we cannot do this in the same block or in nested blocks. Let's see some examples. Have a look at this code over here. We have a variable x and a variable y. And we have two for loops. Inside the first for loop, 
we have an integer i which is equal to 1 and each time we are adding i to the variable x. So as you can see, we can access the variable x inside the block of the for loop. So a smaller block can access a bigger block, okay? Now let's have a look at this loop. We also have a variable i which is equal to 1 and each time we are adding i to the variable y. So what's important over here is that the name of this variable is i and also the name of this variable is i. And this code will give us no problem. Everything works perfectly. So why is that? How can we have two variables of the same name? So as we said, we can have local variables of the same name in different blocks. And as you can see, this variable over here can be used inside the block of the for loop, starting from here and ending over here. So this is the scope of this variable i. Also, this variable i can be used starting from this brace until this brace. So this is the scope of this variable i. So as you can see, the scope of this i is independent from the scope of this i. In other words, we are declaring this variable i in a different block than this variable i. So they can have the same name, okay? And what's important over here is that this variable is independent from this variable over here. They are totally different variables. And also, we cannot access this variable outside this for loop. And the same applies for this variable. We cannot use it outside this for loop, okay? Another example. I have a main method over here, and inside it I'm declaring a variable i. And immediately after that, I'm declaring another variable i. So we are declaring two variables of the same name in the same block, and this is not possible. So this will give us an error, okay? Let's have a closer look. The scope of this variable starts from this point and ends over here. And the scope of this variable starts from this point and ends over here. So as you can see, the scope of this variable is nested inside the scope of this variable. They interfere with each other, okay? So we cannot do this. The name of this variable should be different than the name of this variable. Another example. So over here, I'm declaring a variable i which is equal to 1 inside the block of the main method. And over here, I'm declaring a variable i which is equal to 1 inside the block of the for loop. And as you can see, the for loop is inside the main method. So the block of the for loop is nested inside the block of the main method. So as we said, we cannot have variables of the same name inside nested blocks. So this code over here will give us an error. The name of this variable should be different than the name of this variable. Now let's have a closer look. The scope of this variable starts from this point until this point over here. And the scope of this variable starts from this point until this point over here. So the scope of this variable interferes with the scope of this variable. Okay? Let's have a look at another example. Suppose that we have a for loop and inside it we are initializing a variable i. So the scope of this variable starts from this point until this point. And inside the loop we have another loop. Suppose that we call this variable i. So the scope of this variable is from this point until this point. So we have two variables of the same name in nested blocks. Because the block of the inner loop is nested inside the block of the outer loop. So the scope of this variable interferes with the scope of this variable. So this is not possible. This is why usually we call this variable j. So the name of this variable and this variable should be different. Now finally, let's have a look at this example. Over here we have the main method and we also have another method. It is called method1. Inside the main method we have a variable i and inside method1 we have a variable i. The scope of this variable starts from this point until this point. So this variable is inside the block of the main method. And also this variable is inside the block of the method1. So these two variables are declared in different blocks. And as you can see, the scope of this variable is different than the scope of this variable. They don't interfere with each other, okay? The same applies for this parameter over here. This is a variable that is called args, and this is a variable that is called args. And the scope of this variable is method1, and the scope of this variable is the main method. So these are two variables that are declared in different blocks, and they can have the same name. Now what's important over here is that this variable is totally independent than this variable. They are different variables. And the same applies for the variable i. This variable is independent from this variable over here. So what I want you to take from this example, we can have local variables of the same name in different methods because they are declared in different blocks. Each method has its own block, okay? So this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.